What is up, good people of the world? So I just had an idea for a video series, and I know I'm uh, making too many video series, but as long as I keep up with them, it should be fine. In any case, what I'm going to be doing in this series is taking a simple tune and reorchestrating it a bunch of different ways, um, just to showcase how much creative freedom you have just with the orchestration. And I'm going to try and... Uh, not just do it for the sake of making a nice end product, but I'm going to specifically make a concerted effort to try and make each version as different as possible. You know, we'll do some parts that are kind of part writing driven. We'll do some parts where there's composite orchestration. We'll do some parts where we're supporting a solo. Um, and the only constraint is that we're going to be using the same theme. And the theme that I decided to go with was uh, Harry Gregson Williams uh, Chronicles of Narnia theme. Uh, which is a nice, simple melody. It's it's one of the few melodies that can get away with using the uh, uh, one six three seven um, uh, <laughs> progression. Uh, we will probably likely change the key for these different versions because different keys work better to place the theme in different tessituras for different instruments. But just to play you the theme in A minor, if you haven't heard it before, it's a very nice, simple tune. I'm just going to be using the f there's a, there's a full tune, but I'm just going to be using the first four bars. And the harmony is very simple. A minor, F major, C major, G sus, going to uh, um, uh, G, or you know, four, it's just four G suspension. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. So uh, I think we'll start out with kind of the general, I, I always think of this melody being played on the horns and it plays commonly in the uh, um, films on the horns, although not exclusively, obviously. Doo -doom -doom -doom. There are also lots of triplets in this melody, which I like. I might go up to that high C. I think I, I think I'm gonna place it in C minor. C minor is a nice flat key, and I don't I don't think I want to go up to that high C just just yet. I say just yet. We're only gonna do the first four bars, but in any case, all right. Let us also constrain ourselves. And so each episode in the series is gonna be a different uh, a different version, and it sh each episode shouldn't take too long because. It's a simple theme, and I'm not going to spend too much time overthinking things because I all I have to worry about is the orchestration. So, uh, yeah. And I might put the suspension in the horns because I think it'll sound nice. Let me see how uh, it articulates this. Okay, let's speed up the tempo. Let's try 125. I actually I like uh, I like the detached articulation. I think it works for this heroic theme. Now we'll try it with everyone together, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the four three suspension. Just to make it easy for you guys, I'm going to relabel these. Horns 1 and 3, horns 2 and 4. So 2 and 4 the low horns, 1 and 3 the high horns. I don't know whether or not I want to have that articulated or not, but we'll try it out. And I think it, it'll be nice to prepare the suspension. And it works because it creates a perfect fifth interval, and then the suspension is prepared and then resolves. So we, we'll, hand, we'll, we'll handle it classically. And I think we could actually go ahead. Try this. Sorry, I didn't do this right. Nah. I think what we did 
originally is nice. Not too complicated, but also um, uh, it's nice. I might add a trumpet, a single trumpet, but I don't know. I, I kind of like the horns just on their own. I think they have an ability to them. It's very nice. Um, I'm going to do the, the typical trombone thing here. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the horns as the top line and then trying to create a part writing structure that works with that. So I'm going to put C minor down beneath. It does place the E flat pretty low, but it's a minor chord, so it's not that you know heinous of a crime. Uh, and uh, we can't make it any higher because it'll be voice crossing, and I don't want to have any brass instruments above the horn because it'll distract the melody. Uh, and we will have that B flat in the bass rather than C going straight to A flat. We'll have the passing tone B flat, and that'll happen at the rhythmic moment that the D happens. Yum bum. That way, it creates a major third. Okay. And uh again this is happening when this happens. And uh, although it doesn't really matter, I'm going to give this third part actually just to the bass bone because it's a bit more comfortable down there. Okay, I'm going to try that with tuba, which will warm it up. with the tuba. This, this theme is very inviting. It's majestic and it's assertive um, uh, and hopeful and noble, um, but it's also like warm uh, and uh, fuzzy like, like Aslan. Um, creating parallel thirds. It'll make a nice line. I'm telling you, a lot of orchestration is just part writing and counterpoint. If you could get your part writing and counterpoint together, that solves half the issues. Yeah, I don't know why these uh, accidentals are showing up. give it a sense of like uh, a little bit of a dominant sense. If you're on the one chord, if you double the fifth, it gives you a bit of a, a quasi dominant, even though you're still in a root position one chord. Little trick there. And it also is a horn fifth thing. Right? You all know what that is. That, that voice leading, the horn fifth thing. Also, there are lots of different... Uh, um, pieces that use that voice leading configuration.
Yeah, I like the idea of doubling the F here. And that's also a nice line. We might just double the B, B flat, but we'll see. I also am going to tie this over. That'll allow the melody to articulate that beat three so as to avoid the third doubling to um, overshadow it or distract from it is the, is the right word. All right, let's try this. something like that. We'll dovetail. Actually, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use first and seconds both to create um, uh, open intervals so that, you know, parts for this arpeggio. And then I'll just not give them the downbeat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I want. Silly Sibelius, that's a tongue twister. Not beaming these things properly. Yeah. And if I were doing this in real life, I would actually do up bow and then put the down bow on beat, uh, beat three. I just want to hear how these sound like on their own. Sounds 
sounds nice, sounds nice. <laughs> We'll do that rather than having having the fifth. It's the same again, horse, horn, fifth, vo voice leading thing. We'll do M, uh, MF and uh, MF here. Bring this down so the dynamic room is washed. <laughs> some doubling here in the winds. So for flutes. Mm, I think oboes might be better suited for this actually. Oops. If you select all the measures of a piece, it'll automatically delete the whole thing. Okay, cool. And then I think uh, I'll have the lower strings play exactly the same thing as these dudes or women. These are genderless computer sounds. Yeah, I think I'll do that and then rather than not have any doubling for that, for that, the upper line, I'll have bassoon doubling at mezzo forte. Pretty good off the bat. I think the only other thing that I would do is a uh, harp. And uh, I'm going to reduce both of these onto harp. I'm satisfied with that. I don't think it needs any more. Um, uh, you know, nice and simple. Again, just to re articulate, horns are playing in unison. They split out so that the lower horns can take that suspension because it's a nice part of the harmony. And then the horns with the trombones and tuba comprise a simple four-part writing structure. And then that lower half of the four-part writing structure is doubled with uh, violas, cellos, and contrabasses, although the contrabasses are down an octave. And so in order to make sure that this tuba is doubled, um, to avoid balance issues, I went ahead and doubled it in its range with the bassoon. And then finally, we have these nice, you know, open intervals, fifths and sixths, just basically following the chord and, you know, having parallel sixths when, when there are neighbor tones and things like that. Um, uh, with the first and second violins, and then that is doubled in the harp and uh, doubled in the oboes and clarinet. And the reason I didn't double it in the flute is because it's too low for the flute and the flute's not really going to come out. Um, this is pretty high. So if I were writing for live players, I would probably do a, um, a dovetailing where like just that part gets played by the flute and they kind of alternate. But for our purposes here, I think that works out fine. Anyway, so tune in to next episode of uh, the series to see a um, another totally different orchestration of the same tune. Adios.